This tiny PC has four two and a half gig ethernet ports. It has a brand new processor with new features and a lot more performance than the previous generation. Now we have reviewed tons of these little fanless units over the last year and a half or so, and they've always had some quirks, but they've been getting better over time, but they kind of plateaued in the last generation. But that plateau is no more because these things are way better and they fixed a ton of the just annoying things that have wanted to be fixed in these units. But hold on, let's back up. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH and this is the brand new fanless mini PC. Now this has to be one of the most anticipated reviews, not just by I think our, our viewers and our readers on the STH main site, but also just me. I've wanted this new version since I saw the first designs for it. And the reason is that this uses the brand new Intel Alder Lake N processor. So we have both the N100 and also the N200 versions here. While they are still four cores, when you guys see the performance of them, you are going to flip out because the performance in this generation is just way better than we saw previously. And the reason that we have both the N100 and also N200 versions, and you'll notice that we actually have like literally three of the exact same units uh, other than one of them has the N200. And, and the reason for that we got all these is, uh, well, number one, shipping speed was kind of crazy. And then number two, I just wanted to know if getting the N200 was a worthwhile upgrade over the N100. And before we get too far, I just wanna say thank you to the STH YouTube members for supporting this channel and giving us the revenue so we can go buy these units. And if you can help out, you can always find that join button down below. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, now all three of these units are exactly the same, except one of them has the N200 in it. And so what I wanted to do was just, we're, we have these set up so we can do our performance and power stuff, and we can show you that in a little bit. But I wanted to take this one and just walk through the hardware, and we're gonna start with the outside of the system. Now, the first thing that you're gonna see is the front of the system. There are some new features and some old features, and I actually kind of like what they did here. So first, we have a power button, and then we have two USB 3 ports. Awesome. We also have a TF slot, which is basically a micro SD card slot. And then we have a couple of other little tiny features that you might miss otherwise. The first one is that we have a clear CMOS button, which is recessed. Thank goodness it's not one of those designs where it's just an easy button because frankly, I don't think you'd want to do that all the time. Now, the other feature, I have no idea what the heck this is, but there's a little recess thing that is called G. And I, I don't know what G means here, but you, you can maybe tell me in the comments. Now, the other small feature I just want to show real quick is that this does have two little holes. So if you want to go and add a Wi-Fi NIC later, you can and put antennas and actually have a little spot to pass them through the chassis. Now, speaking of the chassis, we've looked at a bunch of these units, and this is definitely one of the bigger, but also one of the better chassis in terms of performance. And I'll just kind of show you, uh, th this is the fifth generation uh, one with the N5105. This is much smaller. This one weighs a lot more. The new one weighs a lot more. And, uh, and we've seen this chassis in the N5105 and found this one's actually pretty good. And if you're wondering why we have the fifth generation one over there that we never reviewed on YouTube, well, I'll get to that in a little bit in our key lessons learned. Okay, now moving to the back, this is of course the place that you wanna be on this system. And the reason for that is that we get four two and a half gig ethernet ports. These are Intel I226V ports. So they are the newer version or not necessarily the old version like the I225B3s that we saw previously. We get another pair of USB 3 ports and then we also get a HDMI and a display port output. And finally, we get a 12 volt DC input. And we're gonna talk about those power supplies because they got a lot better in this generation too. Okay, now on the bottom of this, you're gonna see we have the newer design with the vents and uh, and there's even a little update there. Now, if you go back into the archive of STH, you'll see that these things used to just be like kind of flat, just things. And, and you would actually not get enough cooling to the bottom of these systems. So I do like the fact that uh, finally, you know, we are getting some venting on the bottom and that transition happened about a year ago. Getting inside the system, there are four screws. So it's pretty easy to get inside. And then this bottom panel just lifts off. And before we get too far, I just wanna point out that on this bottom panel, you might see this, but there's actually a little mesh, hopefully you guys can kind of see this, that now covers these holes. It used to be that, you know, you buy one of these things and these would just be just giant gaping holes, but we finally have a little mesh. And it's just one of those little tiny quality improvements that we're seeing now. And just like every generation of these, we start to see like a little bit better quality. And I think this is just a small example of that. 
Okay, now looking inside the system, you're gonna see some uh, new stuff and some old stuff, right? So a couple things here. So first thing is that we have our main components where we have uh, on this side, we only have our memory as well as our NVMe SSD. Now you're gonna see that this has a couple of new features that are a little different than the previous gens. Let's start with the memory. So in the previous gens, we had two DDR4 DIMM slots, but in this generation, because the N100 and 200 and 305, all those are only one channel or single channel memory, that means that we only need one DIMM. But we're also moving from DDR4 to DDR5, so we do get more performance out of that one DIMM, and so it's just kind of that trade-off. And a lot of folks were running those previous generations with only one DIMM because it was lower power, but that also means that you got half the memory bandwidth anyway, so getting 50% more memory bandwidth because of DDR5, I think is a good thing. The other thing that was a little different in this generation is that we started getting things like this as our memory instead of getting some kind of no-name brand. Uh, we, we now have Crucial Memory, which is a Micron brand. And I think that's a good example of where the companies that make these say, hey, you know, we, we know that folks don't really like getting the no-name brand memory, so what does it take to go and use branded memory? Now, the next thing you're gonna see is that we still get our M.2 NVMe SSD, which is something that we've seen for generations, but then you'll see under that, we have something that's uh, quite different. So there's an M.2 slot here that is really for, I think it's for like Wi-Fi, but one of the things that you get with this system is that you get this little H board that allows you to put another M.2 SSD. So I guess the idea is that you could take two SSDs, stick them in this fanless enclosure, and then, um, you know, have have a ton of storage for a low power firewall node. I, I don't I don't know why. Now, something that I was told as a reason that these things were delayed when I ordered them was that some of the early ones had issues with this little H board with the M.2. The other thing about this, uh, which is different if you have like an older one and you've never seen these, is you know, you can actually get these things to make noise and I'll show you why. So this little H board is not uh, actually tied into the motherboard. And so let me let you hear this. And so it just kind of loops around and hopefully you can hear that. And sometimes like, you know, if you were to go take it and go like whack or something like that, you can hear the thing and you're like, what the heck? This thing feels like a solid metal block. Like what's going on? Well, it turns out it's a little M.2 board. Okay, so let's talk about the performance of these before getting to our key lessons learned. The big thing in terms of performance on these is just clearly the fact that the N100 is a massive jump over the N5105 and also the N6005. Now these things are still four core processors. Of course you get an updated like, you know, GPU IP and all that kind of stuff in these. So if you are gonna do things like pass through a GPU or whatever, you have a new GPU in the N100 or N200 you know, series, all the way like N. And let me just show you a couple of charts in terms of what I mean by this is way faster. For example, when you compare something like an N6005 or N5105, which are pretty close to one another, with this, the N100, you're gonna see that you get about maybe 30 something percent better single thread performance and multi-thread performance can be up there as well. I'll say that just in our testing, the N100 was about 25 to 35% better performance than the previous generation, which is just frankly awesome. Now on most of these systems, it's about $40 more to upgrade to the N200. You still get four cores and four threads, but you get a little bit higher clock speeds. And what that translates to is a little bit better performance where we're now talking about maybe, you know, 40 to 50% better than the N5105 slash N6005. Again, that's a pretty massive jump in terms of performance. Now we don't have the fanless version yet, but the Core i3N305 that we looked at previously in that little B-Link PC, or maybe after, depending on what order these get published in, well, that one, we can add that in. And when we look at the performance of the eight core unit, you're gonna see that, yeah, of course, because you have eight cores, you get better performance. But on the other hand, it does cost a lot more. And those ones uh, are a little bit more delayed in terms of, coming out on market. Now, a lot of folks ask, you know, can these things drive two and a half gig Ethernet? And the answer is, of course they can. You know, even the older generation ones we have seen were able to drive two and a half gig Ethernet, no problem. And you could, you know, these are only four ports. We've seen the older generation do it across six ports, for example. So, so I, frankly, uh, just getting more CP performance is probably doesn't mean much in a two and a half gig chassis like this. The one thing it does though, is it does give you more performance. So if you wanted to do something like virtualize these, you can. We put Proxmox on both of these units and it worked out of the box. By default, if you get these with storage and memory, you're probably gonna get OPN Sense pre-installed, but uh, I, I would personally just reinstall OPN Sense and just download it yourself and just reinstall it. If you do wanna use PF Sense, you're gonna have to use something newer than the just kind of free PF Sense that's just out there. You're gonna need to use a newer version that has things like uh, support for the i226. There's things like PF Sense Plus, 
plus, for example, if you want to go do that and also some nightly builds. But with the extra CPU performance, it's pretty trivial to just easily go and create a Proxmox, you know, kind of base system, put OPN Sense in a virtual machine, and then just virtualize your firewall router solution. The reason you might want to do that is a couple folds. Number one, it is easier if you want to go do updates or upgrades. Also, if you have to roll back, you can snapshot things and then roll back your VM uh, in case a upgrade goes poorly, which uh, I've definitely used that a couple times. And the other nice thing that you can do is you can make other VMs if you want to have other services that are maybe not offered by OPN Sense, you can totally go do that here. And that's the advantage of just having an extra processor, just more headroom to go do that. From a performance perspective, do you need the N200? I, I don't think you do. We're going to see the power consumption in a little bit, but I also think that the N100 is probably where my recommendation is going to be for the four core processors. And speaking of power consumption, let's get to that next. Okay, so let's talk about the power consumption of these units uh, because there's some interesting stuff here. So the top unit, this is our N100 unit, the bottom unit or the middle unit, that's the N200 unit. And then the one that's all the way at the bottom that we're not gonna turn on, that's just another one of the N100 units. There was a slight difference between the two that we got, uh, the N100 and 200, and then also this N100, different sellers. And something that was a little different is that the uh, bottom one, we actually got the little light on power supply and this is the power supply that we've gotten with a couple other units. Like for example, we got it even with this fifth gen unit back here. And so it's just one that we've seen uh, and it's definitely a higher quality supply than just the, uh, you know, replacement AC adapter that we've seen previously. But both of these top units actually came with the same Ockbell and these are 60 watt units and they have things like uh, UL listed and stuff like that. So we didn't, we didn't actually research that any of these markings are, are true. But on the other hand, uh, Ockbell is, is, you know, a, definitely a bigger uh, power supply vendor. So it is kind of exciting to see that the power supplies in these are generally getting better. And because the two that we're going to be comparing came with the same power supply, what we're just going to do is just have one setup over here. And what we're going to do is look at these two units back to back and we already have the first one turned on. So the first one that we have turned on is the N100 unit. It's right now running Proxmox and we have one two and a half gig ethernet port that's active. And what you'll see is that the idle on this one is about 11.4, 11.5 watts, somewhere in there. Now let's see what happens when we go and stress this thing. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go and turn on a little stress mechanism and just kind of see what this looks like. So in terms of power consumption, this is only using like 22.4 watts. And frankly, you're never gonna really run one of these systems at 100% like CPU utilization like we're doing here. But still the fact of the matter is that if you wanted to, this is low enough and it's just really at that that level, but you could get a PoE, you know, like PoE plus splitter and actually go in and run this off the 12 volt there. The other thing I want to point out just real quick is that you're going to see that our core temperatures are somewhere in that like, you know, 40 ish Celsius range. And that's okay. Uh, frankly, for a 24 seven box, if that's what you see when you go run it at 100% CPU utilization, um, that, that's pretty awesome. Okay, now we have the Intel N200 version. And this is of course the faster version. Something that you're just gonna see is that in terms of our idle power, consumption, we're still somewhere in that, like, you know, maybe 10.4 to like 11.5 watt range. So it's about the same idle power consumption as the N100. That's the first point. And then the second point I wanted to do real quick is let's go throw a little bit of a load on it. And here's where we're going to see a little bit bigger of a difference. So this one is now at about 27.4, 27.5 watts. So going from the N100 to the N200 does give you more performance, but at the top end, when you're really stressing the CPU, it's gonna use maybe about five or so, five and a half watts more. Now there's one other thing that I think looks a little bit weird, and that's just the fact that the core temps on this one are getting up to about 70 degrees Celsius. And frankly, for a five watt difference in this chassis, we've tested a bunch of different configurations of the chassis, you know, that, that five watt difference in terms of power consumption should not be pushing, you know, this one to like, 70 and uh, well, we had the, the N100 at 40. So my guess is that we don't have a great contact patch between the CPU and the chassis here. And that is one of the challenges on these AliExpress units is that sometimes uh, they come out of the factory and they are not perfect or maybe they get damaged in shipping. I don't know exactly what it is. And we have folks on the forums and we have big forum threads on this where people just go, you know, re thermal paste them and, uh, and you know, come up with solutions to improve that contact patch. But it's kind of interesting. It's the first one that we've reviewed where we have really seen that difference in the build quality. And it's kind of funny just because these also came from the exact same vendor in the exact same package. And the other reason I think this is an anomaly is just because the other N100 unit in the exact same one uses the same amount of power and it also doesn't have the, you know, 70 degrees Celsius thing. It's more in that 40 range. So with that, let's get to our key lessons learned. 
Okay, now with all of these mini PC reviews, I love to have a key lessons learned discussion, right? And so what did we learn from these units? Well, uh, I have a couple of key learns. Like one, I think that the new processor line is absolutely awesome. This is a huge performance upgrade and I can't wait to get the Core i3 and 305 version because I just think that that's gonna be, you know, like the exact one that offers that extra bit of performance that I'm just so excited about. We've already seen it in a desktop PC. I just kind of want to see it in this fanless form factor. The other thing that's very apparent in these systems though, is just what they've done around them. Examples, uh, these, these things have come with Ocbell and also light on power supplies that have some regulatory markings. I'm really just jazzed on the fact that, you know, we got better power supplies in this as well. And there are other little things like, for example, just, uh, you know, like the fan mesh that's on the bottom here, the ability to have that second M.2 SSD if you want, or you could go put Wi-Fi or just nothing in there. And then just using this chassis, which we found is one of the better cooling chassis out there for these kind of fanless PCs. I just think that overall, the quality of these is much better. Now we did run into that weird temp issue on the N200 and we're gonna go probably just, you know, re-thermal paste that CPU and you know, the heatsink block and all that kind of stuff. Cause that's usually what that is a sign of. So if you see that, definitely uh, definitely go look for it. And it just kind of shows that these things are not like perfect quality because that, that should not have happened. But on the flip side, we still got two out of three awesome. And this is one of the first first ones that we've seen after uh, ordering probably two dozen of them that we've actually run into that issue. We have seen folks on the forums though, and we have big form threads on these things. So you can go look in the forums and you know, if you run into anything weird on them, that would be a good place to go get some support. The one thing that really got me though, was really just the shipping times. Like the AliExpress shipping times, like like taking a month and a half to get a unit here, I think uh, on one of them was, was just too long. Hopefully that's just a symptom of like, you know, these things were brand new. So they just were selling them before they were ready to ship. The second two units that we purchased got here a lot faster. So I think that that's, um, you know, that's just kind of a bummer. It's just part of AliExpress shipping and just be aware that it's not like prime shipping where it shows up in a day or same day or something like that. Hey guys, I hope you like this installment of our little mini PC firewall series. I think that these things are super awesome. And frankly, uh, they are putting some distance between them and the previous generation products. While they're not perfect, the one that I can't wait to see is the i3 N305 version because eight cores I think would be a game changer in this space in terms of capabilities. And we are gonna have that very soon. So if you did like this video, well, you can definitely check out some of our other videos, but also give this video a like, click subscribe, and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching, have an awesome day.